This is Dave Reese of Blue Rail Trains, and I'm here to give you a tour of the new Blue Nami by Soundtracks. So what is Blue Nami? You're probably familiar with the Tsunami, uh, Tsunami 2s by Soundtracks, uh, which is Soundtracks award-winning uh, DCC sound decoders. Now what they've done here is they've taken the Tsunami 2 and added a tiny Bluetooth low energy chip with Blue Rail firmware, so you can use the Blue Nami like a traditional Tsunami decoder, or you can download the free Blue Nami app onto your iPhone or iPad and control or customize your local wirelessly using your smart device. The Soundtracks has been making sound decoders since the 90s, and Blue Rail has been doing Bluetooth train control, interface design, app development, and firmware for over a decade. So in many ways, this is the perfect marriage of technology. So let's dive right into the app. So what you do is you power up your loco using whatever power source you want. Now, in this case, I've got um, DC power going to a track, but you can use uh, DCC, regular DC, or battery. So I'm powering this up. <coughs> then once it's powered up, you launch the app. The uh, train, the loco should appear on the screen and it's automatically connected. The first time that you connect, there's gonna be a connect button here that you have to push, but I've connected to this one in the past. So we're now connected. So now the range is really good. You should be able to get well over 100 feet or more depending on your installation. So I'm going to select my locomotive and on the way the train control screen, first thing it's gonna do is it's going to collect all the Blue Nami CV data. Um, it's transferring over to the app and that takes between four and five seconds. But so now all the latest CVs from this decoder have been transferred to the app. And that's important because this can be operated on a DCC layout and you may have edited these values on an NCE cab or something. And we wanna make sure that the app has all the latest data in here. Now, here we are in the train control screen. Train control screen has a throttle and the basic controls for the headlight, bell, horns. Here's my throttle control, right there. I've got my headlight, you can see that there. Bell, there's my long horn, short horn, change direction. Up here you have a function panel. This lets you control all 28 functions. 14 are here, 14 more are over here. You can uh, trigger those all here. And the app knows exactly which sound decoder you have. And so all these will be pre-populated with all the right data for whatever uh, locomotive you have. Now, down here at the bottom, we have the settings cog. And you touch that and this takes you to the settings screen. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. As I mentioned, the Blue Nami decoder has over 300 controllable settings or CVs. And here we've taken all those settings and broken them down into a logical interface so you can customize everything in your decoder without having to worry about CVs or read a manual. So they're broken into things like sound settings, light settings, speed settings. You have a CV section if you just want to go in and edit your CVs directly. You've also got a consist function settings that lets you manage how functions are used when you're consisting. And you've got dynamic digital exhaust, which is a one button, you just push a button and it automatically sets that all for you. So let's check out the sound settings page. And one thing I should be clear about here is that this contains, the Blue Nami has every feature and sound that you typically have in a Tsunami 2 and it could all be managed right here in these screens. So inside the sound settings page, we have all of these subsections that are um, collapsible sub subsections. So we can open up the first one there and that's the master volume. And this is just a slide that lets me control the volume of my loco in real time. Underneath there you have the main sounds. Now main sounds is, is a section where you have all the selectable sounds within your Soundtracks decoder. Now you know Soundtracks has many sound elements where you can choose from a variety of sounds, and these include prime mover, uh, horn, bell, um, etc. And for each of these, you also have control of the reverb, the volume, and you can make a selection. Also, you can see here, if it's got a little yellow 
uh, button. That means it's an audition sound. Um, sound. So I, I can push that. You can hear it's the Wabco horn right now. I might switch it to a Nathan uh, K3LA. And I can hear that there. Same thing with the bell right now. I've got it on an EMD1. Maybe I want an Alco one. Doesn't really sound appropriate, does it? But this is where you control and you can audition all your sounds, which is really cool. Underneath your main sounds, you have other sounds. This is a section of sounds that you can't actually select an alternate sound, but you do get to control the volume, the reverb, the rate. There's dynamic brakes, radiator, low pressure alarm, uh, brakes, uh, other prime movers, cab doors. You've got volume, reverb, frequency. And the beauty of all this is that you don't need to read a manual. You can just look through here and it's very obvious what everything is used for. You've got other settings. You've got control of your reverb. You've got your EQ. You've got your alternate sound mix and your automatic sound controls. These are all here in the sound settings screen. If we go, I'm just going to quickly go through the other sections. You don't need to see them all. Here's the light settings. If I go in here, you can see I can control the brightness of the... Uh, do I have it set? Yeah. There it's bright. There it's dim. Let me crank it up to bright. Then you've got a section that lets you control your headlight, your backup light, and your four other functions that you might be connected to. I'll go into the headlight section. Right now it's set to a dimmable on-off headlight. I could set that to a Mars light. And I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. It's blinking around like a Mars light. Let me put it on strobe or something so that's very obvious. So you see that flashing strobe. So you just control your headlights from here um, intuitively, the way you'd expect to. You've also got control of your speed settings. These allow you to set your acceleration, your deceleration rate. You've got a three-point speed table. You've got your 28-point speed table here. And you have uh, a section for your back EMF tunings. Um, you've got your standard CV page. This lets you uh, just go in and edit all the CVs directly if that's what you'd like to do. They're all there. You've got a single line reader at the top so you can just pick a page of CV and you can either read or write to it or you've got all your other pages broken out down there. Also, you've got a read all CVs button here so I'll press this and it's gonna read all the CVs from the decoder. Bam, and that takes, you know, four and a half seconds it says right there it took 4.56 seconds now i don't know if you ever do this on jmri but that can take 10 to 13 minutes and uh you can go make a sandwich and put in a load of laundry and come back and it's still not quite done this happens in less than five seconds so that's just like super duper awesome um all right let's take a look at the consist functions down here consist functions this lets you customize how your functions are are uh, managed when you're operating a consist. It's broken down into lead loco, mid loco, and rear loco. So I'll go into these and let you see. You've got all these toggles and you've got all 28 functions. And here, for example, for the lead loco, we want all of the functions just about to be turned on when you are the lead loco in a consist. But when you're the mid loco, we obviously don't want the bell, the horn, and the short horn to be playing. Um, but we do want, it's very important that the dynamic brakes and all those things get passed on to the mid locos. So this is where you control all that. And similarly, you've got control of your rear loco sections. Now this can be used in one of two ways. So if you're into DCC consisting, you can use this screen to set all the functions for your consist function enable CV. So what you do is you go in here, you choose your settings, you go set the toggles, and when you go down to the bottom, there's an option to write these CVs to this decoder. So if you put that, push that button, it'll write the consist function enable CVs for you so you no longer have to add up bits and do all that sort of stuff if you're going to be doing DCC consisting. Now the other way you can use this, which is pretty exciting, is that you can use this app to consist multiple Bluenamis using the Bluenami app's built-in consisting, for which you can use these settings to manage how all the functions are handled in all your consists. So let me show you how consisting works. 
Now to do that, I'm gonna have to power up a second Loco. The second one I'm using is a battery power. He's not on the track, so he moves a little nimbler than the uh, other one, but you know, it's just demo here. So I've got this locomotive. I think I named this locomotive steam, but it's not a steam locomotive, obviously, as you can see. I'm gonna hook up a battery, put it on there. Okay, so he's powering up and he should show up here like I said, he's going to be named Blue Nami Steam. Ignore that. Don't look at that. So I'm going to connect. I'll touch him. He'll do his uh, four and a half second, 4.56 second CV read, which you can skip by pushing, by the way. Okay, so now he's set up. So I'm going to go to the home screen and the place, the real place you really want to do your con system from. You can do it from the train control screen, but you probably want to set up in the multi-train screen. Multi-train screen is where you go is if you've got, when you're running multiple locomotives and that way you can see multiple throttles on screen at the same time. I've got this guy over here and I've got that guy over here and I've got independent control of them. Uh, so if I'm going to set up a con syst, what I do is there's these little chain links down here, and that's for linking tra trains. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to press that, and I'm going to assign this to Consist A. And I'm going to take the second loco and also assign it to Consist A. We just put four of them there because I've never really met anybody who runs more than one four Consists at a single time. But uh, we could put more if we needed. So right now what it's done is it's set up this loco as the lead loco. I've got my horn and bell controls and headlight controls. The rear loco right here, which it's automatically assigned because I did it second, um, doesn't have a throttle control. You can't control the horn and bell. And it's assigned it up here as a rear loco. It's also said, notice that it's facing forward. If that was wrong, I could set it to facing backward. And so now that I've got them consisted, I can run them with a single throttle. Let me go back this way. Ooh, that guy's that guy's like a sporty chicken, isn't he? Now, um, when I'm, if I want to trigger functions, I go to my standard train control screen. So I'll go control this loco here, and from here I can trigger my functions, and it's going to respect the settings that I'd set up in my consist functions pages, which is uh, really cool. Okay, so now, who does this product target? So I could see three audiences for Blue Nami decoders. First, let's say that you like trains and you like really great sound from soundtracks, but you don't want to buy a bunch of equipment, DCC equipment, and you don't want to add up CV bits and read 80 page manuals to manage your loco. Then this is for you. You get all the soundtracks capabilities of Tsunami 2 without the hassle and equipment investment. Now let's say you're someone who's already invested in DCC and you have Tsunami decoders or whatever brand you have, and you have an NC cab or whatever you use to control it, and you want locos that you can run with your existing fleet, but you're a little tired of keeping JMRI running and you're tired of the driver issues and having you know the right version of Java to get that working. Now remember, this doesn't cost a whole lot more than a regular Tsunami 2 decoder, especially when you compare it to a tank of gas, but now you can fire up an iPhone 6S Plus that you got on eBay for 50 bucks and you can immediately use this cool interface to quickly and easily do whatever you want in terms of customizing your logo. So I think there's value here for the existing DCC customer. Now a third separate customer who might find this product interesting is people who like battery power. Let me turn off this guy here so we can kind of quiet it down a little. So if you take a look at this loco here, this little dev loco. Now, as you can see, the battery I'm using for an HO loco, it's about the size of a 9-volt battery. It's a, a little smaller than that. And this battery here will last about two hours um, for an HO loco, give or take. Now, if you're, if you're you know, pulling 50 cars uh, or more, I know people who do that, then the battery's going to last less. If you drive, uh, you know, if you have like an Owen 30 steam loco and it's just a loco that cruises around through the mountains by itself, then the battery's going to last a long time. So there's a little flexibility in how long that lasts. 
Um, if you have a steam loco, this could fit in your this could easily fit in your tender. If you have a diesel, it's a little more challenging. There are ways to flatten these out. There's other tricks, but most people would put it in a trailing car if you had HO. Now, if you have if you're into ON30 S or O, then you could easily have a Blue Nami 2200 and a battery in your loco, no problem. Now, when this uh, will really get interesting is when Soundtrax eventually gets around to making a 4 amp Blue Nami. Um, large scale is great for battery. The large scale batteries are more like the size of a Snickers bar, um, but that's no problem in G scale. In any event, um, it's great to have a Soundtrax decoder that could be run on battery. You know, can I get a hallelujah? All right, well, this concludes our first look at Blue Nami, available exclusively through Soundtrax retailers. I'm sure there will be info on the Soundtracks website as to where you can buy them, and we'll make that same information available on BlueRailTrains.com. And remember, folks who've gone blue have never withdrew. That's like a super uh, worst rhyme I could possibly end with. Just thought of it. Um, I want to thank Soundtracks for all their work in making this possible. I want to thank Eric Lawn and Pete Skeggs for their tireless programming on Blue Rail. They are the technical geniuses behind all of this and they deserve all the credit. I'd also like to thank uh, Duncan McCree, Steve Seidensticker, Pete Steinmetz, Bob Walker, Ron Favola, Darby Marriott, and Jack Lynch for all their support over the years. So this is Dave Reese from Blue Rail Trains, and I hope you enjoy your Blue Nami Decoders.